folks back in the boss man show in front of the show. UT Martin, Scott Hall's head coach, Anthony Stewart, with me out of OVC. Coach Stewart, good to see you, man. Good to talk to you. Good to see you, man. Always, I look forward to talking to you every every year. And, uh, you know, it's good to be seen with everything going on. It's good to be seen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, Coach, for you guys, man, uh, I know you, you had the tournament the week before everything kind of shut down. I know it was my birthday, March 11th, where everything kind of went straight. You know what? You know, I'm at the Hawks game and get text messages and season suspended. So, for your guys, probably on spring break. So, how was that first that March 11th week and going from being on campus to being virtual? And how was that for you and your staff and your players, Coach? It, it, it was different. It was really different. It was something that we've never, obviously, none of us have experienced before. Uh, so um, it was uncharted territory. You don't really uh, know what to do. It's something, you know, doctors and scientists, you know, obviously haven't uh, come up with a cure or an antidote. So, you know, it was scary in a sense, too, because you don't really know what you're dealing with. Most and so... Uh, all you can do is just try to self-educate yourself and learn as much as you can about that virus uh, so you can do anything and everything uh, that I could do because it, it, here's the thing is that, you know, boss, man, is that, you know, I'm, 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 I have people's children under my care. And so, you know, when you have other people's children under your care, and you have a, a epidemic going on, that's a serious thing. You know, you're dealing not only with your own players, their parents and loved ones. Uh, you don't really know what to tell them and just trying to gather as much information as you can. And also, you know, making sure they're good. Yes, you know, indeed. their parents and loved ones are good where they are because some of these kids don't have the resources or the know-how or the ways to take care of things like we do here so it was, it was it was about three or four fold what was going on so but we've made it through it and uh we're just you know we're moving on model and, and i know for you having academic advisor your assistant coaches kind of keeping the young men motivated in the classroom because when they at your home home your own devices you, you, you might miss class and you won't go get punished by running the laps for missing class when you're at home so how does it kind of get your young men to, to go there and learn on virtually and keeping their grades up i know you see via the blackboard app what they're doing but how was that for you and your staff and your assistants to get those young men through that semester you know, it, it was business as usual. One thing about, we don't, I don't play that. We don't play, you know, uh, academic uh, failure here. You know, we're on top of it. Uh, nothing really changed except the vehicle by which we did work. We did obviously more virtual stuff, online things, but the checks and balances were there. We got in, you know, we, we, we touched base with them virtually multiple times a day. Um, these are things we do whether or not there's an act, uh, epidemic or not because they are here. Uh, they're going to receive a degree, a meaningful degree, and they're here to learn, okay? And so uh, basketball is just something that they do. It's not who they are. And so that's important to me, and we've talked about this. So nothing changed as far as our approach to academics, but the vehicle by which we delivered the finished academic product that that's the only thing that changed most definitely i, I know uh young men you know having you as a coach you hold them accountable on and off the court so i knew they would be <laughs> right in line with you coach i know you take care of that on every end of the, you you treat them as what they are student athletes not just an athlete so you you really believe in that i know that about you so i know you young men will be okay and in that regard for sure yeah no no question and like i tell my uh my players and uh, it's real simple here. I don't have a whole lot of rules, but anything that you cannot do at a corporate job or in a corporate environment or in a corporate structure, you can't do here in my program. So you will be prepared to have a real job uh, when you leave here. Most definitely. And coach, uh, strict conditioning wise, I know it was hard for them young men being back home. They couldn't work out or they couldn't, couldn't go to gym. So how'd you our approach keeping the young men semi in shape, doing things on Zoom and group texts and send them on workouts? How was that for you guys over the spring and summer here? The only thing I, I mostly uh, tried to do was just stimulate their minds uh, to, you know, 
a, a lot of times we're too worried about the physical aspect of this, you know, and sometimes they just need it. You know, Hey, we just need to make, Hey, how you guys doing? How's your day? How are your people? How are your friends? Okay. And so if they were following, which majority of our guys were instructions and protocol, they needed to be in the, in the house. They needed to quarantine. A lot of them had curfews. So a lot of these people's environment changed as to where they kind of got uh, cabin fever. And so they definitely go here. They couldn't go there. So you had to make sure they stim- you stimulated their minds uh, with some things. The physical going to be okay. We're going to get to that. They've been playing basketball their life. Make sure that they're mentally mentally stable. They're doing well. Uh, we the, the only basketball stuff we we did or gave them was so, uh, some defensive philosophies. Watch the little film, and then you know I'll I'll get with y'all when y'all get back. I just want you to be healthy. I want your family to be healthy, and I want everybody to be safe. That's it. Most definitely. And speaking of mentally, you know, what's going on in our country, it's been happening over this pandemic with social injustices. How did you all approach that topic? I know a lot of coaches tell me, tell me about it. You use the Zooms to educate their young men about getting registered to vote, to teach them about the situation going on in the country. So how did you all use that platform as well to kind of get those young men involved in the civics and understanding what goes on between us, blacks, whites, and Latinos, and non-black, whites, and Latinos and in this country here? Well, you know, my, my players had a head start. And so, and I'm not knocking anybody's program, but we're registering to vote regardless if there's a presidential election. That's the first thing our guys do when they get here. Uh, you know, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon uh, to vote for president. But in the meantime, uh, there are senators and, and, and congressmen and people at the state level and the city level. They're the ones who make the laws. Most definitely. And so, like, don't get it twisted in that thinking you just need to get involved because you don't like something that's happening now with the president. You don't like something that's happening now with the government. This is a continual thing. Yes, indeed. And so, you know, my, like I said, my guys have a uh, head start in the fact that, you know, they don't, they, they're not here playing for a, a black coach. They're playing for a black man. And yes, so indeed. the apparent difference between the two. You got there, right, Coach? And I feel like that's something we've been missing. You know, for me, you know, my parents were in civics. I was taught about voting at a young age, right? So I've know, I always know that state, local is what matters the most. Federal is, is important, but what affects you every day is what's happening locally in state. And, you know, just like here in Georgia, with the you probably heard about the mask mandate issue with our mayor and the governor of Georgia, right? That's, <laughs> had somebody else won, that wouldn't be a problem. Because, you know, we're not, we're out and we're still here out of control in Atlanta. So, like you said, as an example, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, of how state and local miles more than that federal does, and how that affects your day-to-day day life, every every day. It, 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 it really does. And, you know, when, you know I've got a uh, t- uh, 12-year corporate uh, career in that I used to always used to chuckle in that when, you know, the big boss man or the, the owner of the company, the or vice or the president or vice president come into town. Now everybody's straightening up their desk and they're changing their clothes and they're, they're working harder. And they're like, well, hey, Anthony, why, why, you ain't, why you ain't moving no fa- I do this regardless if it's the vice president. Or pre- this yes, is indeed. Thing. Yes, oh, indeed. Right. You know, and this is just kind of not everybody want to vote and boom, boom, and register. We doing this regardless. This is what we do. Most definitely, and I think I'm glad that you did it for your young men because you know they need to understand it. a lot of young people. I I'm 33 years old. A lot of people my age bracket and below are out of loop on civics. So I'm hoping this is a jump start with you are doing for your young men and others will be involved going forward from because we're the next generation of this country is it's my age and below you know so we have to be engaged and involved and people like you and my parents who set me up for it are very key and crucial to our progress moving forward for real coach and so you know the last thing i'll say on that is my challenge isn't uh you know necessarily for people that I, I do believe we need to have as many people uh, 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 registered to vote as we can. But the real challenge for me is, will these same programs, these same coaches and these, you know, all around the country, will they be making the same push next fall 
when there's not a presidential election? Or is it is it not as important to vote then as it is now? It is. Let's just see if we got the same push. And I'll challenge them on this show to do it, Coach. No, I'll challenge them on it because I will do that. Because you know, I, since you know, I'll just tell you one more thing before we move to the next topic. But for me personally, I've decided to use my show for more of a platform. I've lost four sponsors, Coach. You know, and I'm like, it's mighty interesting that I've decided to use my platform for a different reason. I lose sponsors, but it's all good because God's gonna bless me no matter what. But it's awfully funny that hey, four people drop because. I decided to talk about other issues other than the Hawks or the Falcons, the Braves, college basketball, or whatever. <laughs> it's my <Right>. uh, interesting. <laughs> right. I, I, I get it. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Now, Coach, for you, you're in year five at UT Martin, man. Has it flown by? As the head man, how's it, has it flown by for you, Coach? I know you, you was an assistant on the Heat Shroyer you there, man. So how has it been, man? Has it flown by that you're going in year five as the head man at the UT Martin? It has. And I think, you know, time flies when you're enjoying what you do. And I enjoy working with young people. I enjoy uh, representing this fine university. Uh, and it, it, it just seems like yesterday, like you just said, I was up here as an associate head coach with my best friend, Heath Schroyer. So um, there, there's something to be said about. There's some uh, truth to it uh, in that you know, you find something you love to do, uh, you don't work a day in your life. So I don't I don't find this to be work. I find this to be fulfilling and gratifying uh, to see young adults of all ethnicities and creeds and cultures uh, reach their goals on and off the court. And that's what that's why I, I that's why I do it in particular. You have a unique, I'll say, in Martin is a unique town because it's the school's pretty much the town is, is the school. And so when you're at UT Martin, you got two focuses, academics and basketball, or if you if you play basketball. So your university, your young men have a great opportunity to focus on their games, we talked about it in the past, and, and play for you who demands you play hard because I watch you guys on the digital network. Your team always plays hard. You might not win every night, but you play hard and you play committed to what you the scheme you're playing. And I love, love that when I watch your team because I love how they timeouts, they have, you have their attention. You have those young men early engaged. I want to commend you, Coach, on that and how the job you do with your young men, watching you from afar, of course. I appreciate it. Uh, that's the goal, uh, getting the, the – the, the getting a, a 100% or more than 100% buy-in uh, from the mental and the physical and just putting in a hard day's work. You know, like when they go to, when they go to a job, they're going to ask for a, a, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And so that's what we do here in our program. Uh, we try to be representative of the culture here. And that's what the culture here is. You know, it's agriculture, it's farming, uh, it's blue, more blue collar than white collar here. Uh, and that's hard work, pride, uh, work ethic, uh, people that uh, have been brought up in, in, in great work structures. And so we try to mimic and mirror the things and the people in the processes that were around. So I'm glad to hear that that you see that in our play, and that's what it's about. Yeah, Coach, you also had two promotions on, on your staff. You hired Coach Walker as a full-time assistant coach on your staff, and uh, Montez Robinson, a former coach at Alcorn State. Talk about what those two will bring to your staff here going forward. You know, they're, 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 they're workers. Uh, Montez, uh, I, Coach Walker's been around me. Uh, he used to play for me. So there's a very good trust factor here. He knows what I expect. He knows how I work, uh, what I want to get done because he's lived it and been through it. He's a great young coach and a great young basketball mind. Montez is a uh, former uh, SWAC uh, coach of the year, uh, had a very successful program in Alcorn, and unfortunately, Things didn't go his way in the administration. Uh, they parted ways, but uh, he came off his last year. He had a winning record. And so, uh, you know, I, he's really come in here, taking the bulls by the horns in particular on the defensive side of the ball where I was not satisfied. We were poor last year. That's on me. And I've made a concerted effort to improve our defense and get it to where it needs to be so we can contend for a championship. Yes, indeed, because as you know, Coach, the OVC is – there's no easy outs in OVC, no matter who you play. No, sir. No, no, no easy sir. outs. No, sir. 
and I know from coaches I talk to in the league, they always tell me that you do a great job, but they they hate to play you because of the defense you play. Of course, they, they I always say you do a good job, and his defenses he changes it up on you. It's it's rough to play more. It's like the your, your peers definitely speak how they come on the show, coach, and I see it too. That that, that your zones are great, and how you mix them up and play them, and those guys off for sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yes, indeed. Now, coach, so talk to us about some who are your so you're, you're your key returners, key returners to your to your team, and also your newcomers as well. So, I, I listen here in Atlanta can know who to look for on your roster this year, coach. You know what I've done uh, due to this epidemic in this environment. I've kind of changed my format of my roster. I'm carrying 20 guys this year, so I've got 13 scholarship players, and I've also got seven out of state walk ons, and my walk ons had. Uh, multiple Division One offers, they chose to come invest in themselves and pay their own way for this year because you never know what's going to happen. Hopefully, knock on wood, the virus doesn't, uh, you know, get to us too bad or at all, I hope. And if you have some guys that need to quarantine or, you know, you might have – and he's around another guy and he was around this guy in practice, now you got to get rid of eight guys. Well, for me, I still have 12. And so I have to be able to, um, I want to, I don't want to forfeit any games, lose any games. So I kind of went to my background in playing some minor league baseball and made my own farm team. I got 20 guys that can all at any point in time go in and contribute. My returners, obviously, my son, he took his name out of the draft uh, uh, fairly late. He was getting a, garnering a lot of serious interest. Uh, he wanted to come back for one more year. Uh, I'll have him. He graduates next month with his MBA, but he still has two years to play. Um, we have him coming back. He's the first team uh, preseason all-league guy. Um, Hannes Pola has really been in shape. My transfer that got here last year to play, uh, got a waiver around Christmas time. Um, from Oklahoma, he's really been playing well in preseason here. Some of my newcomers, um, uh, Cam Holton, he's a monster. Got him uh, from uh, Florida Gulf Coast Community College. He was a 20 and 10 guy. Um, got a kid out of uh, College of Central Florida named Jerron Williams. Big six, six, uh, six, six wing, about 215, 220. Really skilled. Um, I've got a kid coming. He, he paid his own way. Uh, uh, was uh, average eight and six out in the Big West at uh, Riverside. He paid his own way last year, invested in himself. Um, yeah, I, I got so many guys, but just off the top of my head, those are uh, Benny Vienna uh, from um, Albany Tech. He's from Georgia. He was an All-American. Uh, got a kid by the name of, uh, excuse me, um, Dante. Uh, losing my mind. Hold on one second. Let me get my board where I got everybody's name. I'll take your time, Coach. Here we go. John, uh, I'm sorry, I said Don, uh, John T. Coleman. Uh, he led the country. He made 115 threes in junior college. Uh, got a real special group of freshmen. Uh, Aunt Thomas, Anthony Thomas from Baltimore. Uh, he's, he's, he's a 6'8 wing. He's special. Um, you know, just to name a few. I'm really proud of my guys, man. Uh, Really, really proud of this group in that, you know, they're, they're just down here. And think of it like this. You got everything going on. And so this is what really makes me feel good. And you take out, so I only have maybe three or four returners. So 16 guys mm -hmm. committed to me having never met me in my life, like face-to-face, man-to-man, broke red with them, shake their hand. Like, do you know what what kind of what it takes for a young man to do that? And these young these young kids to, to, to have the trust in a coach to do that to come to Northwest Tennessee where they're not from. They like that. These this is a special group, man. And I'm I'm really excited, and we're working hard, and I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing because I really want them to be successful. Because I'm so thankful that they believed in me in this time, in this in this time during the ep epidemic. And how was it recruiting via Zoom? I'll ask you about that. I know that's different from, from you. I know you a guy who wants to build bond with guys, like you said. How was recruiting via Zoom, showing the guys to campus via Zoom? So how was that process going forward? That's something you'll use going forward here as well. 
I think, you know, it was uh, – it was different, but I think the, the key element is these kids are coming to play for me and coming to play for my, pro, my program in word of mouth, a belief system, trusting what other people think of my program. They had to do their own due diligence and talk to players. I challenge them. You can talk to players that are leaving my program who I'm not bringing back or who are staying. Like there's, there's no – no, uh, what I say, no fake in the funk. I'm not hiding anything. I'm an open book. You know, I'm forward with everything. I'm not, you know, I'm, uh, there's, 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 there's no games and no tricking anybody. So, the, again, the vehicle was different, but you're selling yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm selling my assistance. And I'm selling the fact that, guys, like you said, this is a particular place where hard work, Hard work and, and, and having a great work ethic is championed here in this community, at this university, and guys get better. And you have to be focused because there's only two things you can really do here. There are no clubs. We don't have a pro team. Uh, you can go to school, get a, get, a, get a fantastic degree, and you can play ball. Yes, indeed. And you know what, Coach? I know your men in Atlanta would love to play for you, man, because I tell them about you. You know, I'm trying to help out guys. I know. I try to tell them, hey, check out Martin. I know it's you know, a little it's skill part of Tennessee, but it's worth it. Worth, give them a look. You know, I tell them all the time. Give them a look. I got three, guys, three new guys here from the Atlanta area. So, yeah, I've told guys to check you out because, I mean, give him a chance. He'll have your back. He's going to coach you hard. He's going to ride you hard. But he's going to be there for you when you need him. So I've told guys that about you because I've, like I see, I've, I've talked to you multiple times. I've seen you guys play. So I, I believe in you and your program wholeheartedly. And I've definitely sold anybody who asked me about you. I appreciate that, man. I really do. That means a lot. No doubt. And that's what I got for you, Coach, this. I know, you know, I know we got to play all those guaranteed games and the non-conference games. So how was that going to go for you guys this year, starting two weeks later and trying to, you know, deal with quarantine in different states and different things like that? How is that going, trying to schedule these games before you get in the OVC play here coming up here, here real soon? Well, as, as of right now, I've been fortunate enough. I'm not going to – I only have to go on the road and leave campus one time uh, to go play a guaranteed game. That was a, a conscious effort that I made. I don't want to – I'm not getting on a plane. We're not going to get on a plane and uh, be in hotels, and I'm trying to avoid staying overnight, just trying to be as safe as I can be, uh, yet put together – I think I've put together a real, real uh, good schedule that will prepare us for that OVC. A good thing about your location in Martin, you can kind of go to Nashville, Cookville, down to Jacksonville may be a little tricky, but but most of the schools you play while within a good busting distance and getting back in one day and one night. Thank God for that. Yeah, this this is a good bus league, especially when it comes to conference. So you don't have to get on a plane, and uh, you know, uh, thank goodness, you know that uh, we have all we only have as of right now. Things could change on um, out of conference. Uh, we only have one uh, bus trip that we got to go down to Ole Miss and play. More definitely. Kermit Davis, my guy, Kermit Davis. So, yeah, <laughs> that'll be a good matchup for sure. That'll be a good matchup for you and him. I know he got some zones as well, so I know that, that'll be a good battle for sure. Well, no doubt. Coach Stewart, man, good to always catch up with you, Coach. It's always good to talk to you during this time of year, man. I'm, I'll am i be watching you guys closely as always, cheering for you and hoping you guys do well with, with you, and your, you and your roster and your staff, man. Tell Montez I said what's up. I'm glad he's landed with you. Okay. I I appreciate it, man. And you do an unbelievable job. It's a pleasure to be on your show and, uh, you know, talk with you. And thanks for all you doing the good uh, good words you're putting in for my program. I appreciate that. Anytime, Coach. You be safe, man. Hope to talk to you down the road, buddy. Okay. You too. Take care. All All right. It's Anthony Stewart on the Boss Man Show. Sally Beauty's new all-in-one hair color kits make it easy to color your hair at home. Get everything you need to color for beautifully radiant results. Loved by professionals, open to everyone. Sally Beauty. All right, folks, back in the Boss Man Show here with Coach T.J. Johnson here of the Texas State Bobcats out of Sunbelt Conference. You'll see him come to town to play Georgia State here whenever we get the schedule coming out here real soon. Coach Johnson, talk to me. How you doing, brother? Interim coach, Texas State, man. You doing good things now, my brother? Man, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. You know, uh, you know, it's a sunny day in San Marcos. You know, the team went to vote today. 
uh, you know, our vote is our voice. So I'm encouraging anybody listening to this to please take this election seriously and, uh, and, 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 and be accounted for, man. You know, uh, uh, stake your place in history and be on the right side of history. So well, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to be on here with you. Excited to have this platform. You know, it's a great what, what better time to be a leader in, in, in this country than in 2020? So uh, I'm good, boss. I'm good. No doubt. And I know you had to feel good, Coach Johnson, when the university tabbed you to take over Coach Casper, who resigned. So knowing that the university had confidence in you to take over his program, how did that make you feel, firstly, as a man and profession as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, we – we all have a desire to do whatever it is we do when you're comp- when when you when you've been raised as a competitor to do it at the highest level. So having an opportunity to be in this position and do this at the highest level of our profession, you know, it's three hundred and what fifty three, you know, and I'm one of those. You know, that's an elite group. So you know, I am certainly humbled and appreciative that the university looked at me. Um, as, as a person of, of great character that could actually lead this group during these uh, so uncertain times. So uh, what I try to tell my guys is, hey, man, you're here because of your talent, um, but that won't keep you here. Your decisions keep you here. So certainly, you know, I may have gotten this job initially, you know, uh, five years ago as an assistant for a number of different reasons. Some might say, hey, man, you know, having Nigel Pearson on your AEU team wasn't a bad, wasn't a wasn't a bad reference on your resume, but at the same time, you know, carrying myself the right way, you know, being a person of of, of great integrity and character, and um, and just being willing to learn, not not coming in with with arrogance, not feeling like I knew it all. Uh, I def I definitely think that it put me in the right position here. So as a coach, you know, you know, as the competitive competitor in me just wanting to um be in this position and and you know you want to just see see what you got see see if you see if you as good as some things that you think you are so and if not see see how quickly you can get better most definitely now, what I love about you is how people can see about you you're loyal because lots of coaches hop around you were there five straight years you know things broke a certain way for you so it showed that you really dedicated to your craft, and the university saw you getting better as a assistant coach, getting stuff done, giving much more to Coach Casper. So showing your worth as a assistant coach, showing your ded- dedication to Texas State University. So I feel like, you know, that helped too. And I'm glad that you got rewarded for your loyalty and your dedication to your craft because you deserved it, man. I, I, I know what you was about before you got there, A&A and U game, guys you, you worked with and developed with. So the fact that you went, went there and wanted to take, pursue that route, man, so it's about, about your heart and character to begin with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, man. I, I, I do take pride in that, man. You know, um, growing up in the streets of New Orleans, you know, we got unwritten rules about things. And uh, let me just tell you, at, 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 at the very top of that list is loyalty. You know, so you don't want to say things that you can't repeat. Uh, and then and then you don't want it to be a place in that city that you can't go and show your face. So uh, and I take that I take that with me today everywhere I go around here. So um, I certainly, like I said, humbled and appreciative, very thankful about the opportunity. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm just I'm just being obedient, man. Try to uh, try to allow God to order my steps. No, Dallas, man, it's just cold. So let's talk about the March, you know. March 11th was my birthday when everything got shut down. You know, the Hawks next game and they get a text message. It's, it's about to be the season, right? So for you guys, I know your tournament is typically that week of my birthday. The Sun Belt tournament is. So what, what was that like to go from participating in a tournament to it's all over, then having to go have kids go home on spring break, not come back, all virtual? Take us through that whole process of, of March in the spring for you guys. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, man, it's almost like you're not receiving any kind of gifts on your birthday. You know, uh, we felt like we had a very, very good chance of uh, of competing for a championship. You know, um, you know, we did that my second year here, uh, came up short to Troy, and we felt like this was by far the most connected team. Um, we felt like this was the only team that we've, which we've had here over the last five years um, of my tenure that had not peaked. So after coming off an unbelievable night versus um, Appalachian State here at home, you know, we're packing our bags, getting ready to go to New Orleans the next morning. And, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, at 8.30 in the morning, we get a call and says, hey, the AD wants to meet with the team 
um, excuse me, the AD wants to meet with the coaches in, in, in Coach Casper's office. And, uh, and that's when they informed us that, that it was going to be canceled. So for our guys, knowing the work that they put in, for the coaching staff, knowing the preparation, um, you know, it, it was pretty devastating, to be honest with you. It was surreal. And then you feel bad for kids like Nigel Pearson and Eric Terry, you know. Um, but Nigel walked away from here, and he said one thing in particular. He said, I have no regrets. And, and I believe our coaching staff and our players, uh, although we, do, we did feel like, hey, you know, we were, we were robbed of that opportunity, but we had no regrets. We know that we did what we needed to do. Starting off, we were one in four, one in four in conference play. Uh, and we ended up coming back and being tied for second um, in, in, in this conference where every night is a war. So, um, you know, I'm proud of these guys, but I'm most of all proud of the way they handled it. You know, these guys picked up the pieces. They, um, I tell them, I say, you, you can, there's not many chances you'll get to, um, you, you, excuse me, I, I, I tell them all the time, I say, what you can control is your reactions. You, can, you can't you can't control the act. So you you you'll be able to control your reactions. And I thought our kids did a really good job of controlling the reactions um, to that. And um, and now they're just excited and anxious about getting back to work. Academically, coach, I know guys have been, been on campus. So how was that go from from being an online campus in person student to being virtual? I know you can check them out on Blackboard, you know, when they're at home, but keeping them accountable where they can't, they miss class, you can't even go make them run a hill or something or run some sprints for you if you miss the class. So how is that to keep the young men focused academically while they're back at home and in their, in their own environments, not with their structure around and they have a campus with you guys? Boss, that's the most, that's, that, that's the most challenging thing. You know, years ago they said, oh, man, pretty soon the new wave of, 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 of academics, you're going to be educated online. You know, you nobody have – just like they told us when we were growing up, cars will be flying by now. You know what I'm saying? All of that stuff. Most definitely. Man, these kids are so uninterested in taking classes online now. They used to get excited about it back, in, you know, maybe a couple of years ago. Now mm -hmm. it's exhausting. And – um and we feel like it's, it's very difficult to hold them accountable. So what we've done is this. If we sense that these are challenging classes and that they're having a hard time keeping focused, they come up to the office. Texas State, uh, it's a it's bless, blessing to be a coach here. We have a $64 million renovation um, that, that was completed two years ago. So we have a wonderful facility plenty enough room for these guys to come in here. So doing your 10 o'clock class, you're going to take your 10 o'clock class up here, although it is online, just to make sure that you're giving the right amount of attention that's needed to that particular class. So you have to kind of get creative, uh, get you an opportunity to touch them, have some human interactions with them and things of that nature, in-person interaction. So um, we think that it, it's definitely difficult, but hey, my, my dad used to say, if it was easy, anybody could do it. And Most you definitely. always tell me when I was a teacher, you're the smartest guy in the room, figure it out. So um, it's our responsibility as their coaches um, to kind of help them be successful and um, in, in, in put them in a place to where they can uh, have some structure. And structure about this also, coaches, physically, how did you all approach them being away from home, trying to keep them in some kind of shape, knowing that they're different environments, whether the rules are different here? So. How does strength coaching, you guys kind of huddle together, kind of say, what are we going to do to see, make these guys kill, keep them in semi shape, be able to run, do some exercise in the yard? How was that for you guys as well? Accountability partners. Hey, man, call your boy, challenge him. How many of you do today? All right, I'm about to call him. He only did this many. He say, nah, he didn't do that many. So I got those guys to challenge each other. Hey, FaceTime when you're doing this. Let us see. So uh, we, we were creative in that. Um, trying to provide some um, some innovative ways. Um, certainly our strength conditioning um, coach has helped us. Um, but for the main part, hey, pairing these guys up, get them to look at each other from, from, from across the way and say, man, hold on, you put up how many shots today on your outside goal? Yeah, you got an outside goal too. Get out there and shoot, you know. So, and just let them know that any level of activity was good. You know, if you can't get in the gym, Hey, man, get outside and do ball handling drills in your driveway. 
hey, if you, if you don't have cones, you know, you, you know, you, I say you can use a whole lot of different things. You know, you got chairs in your house. You got, you got things in your garage. So just challenge our guys and then told them stories about us growing up, things we didn't have, you know, in, in, in ways we made it work. So uh, it, it, it was really, you know, it, it was really good to kind of see them kind of growing into themselves. And coach, using Zoom as well with what's going on in our country, you know, we had murders and different things up rising with the pandemic. So, how did y'all use that platform of Zoom to teach the young men about, you know, what's going on in the country? You told me off the air, you got your guys going out and voted today. So, how did y'all kind of educate the young men civically and what's going on in our country? Because they are the next generation. I'm 33 years old, so I know how it's been a millennial. They they they, they that Gen Z right behind me. So, getting them ready for what's coming is they get to my age and older. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, one of the things that that um, that really, you know, I had been in the point of contact position for three and a half months. Certainly, I've only been in the head coach here for three weeks. But, you know, um, throughout this whole investigation, you know, I was the acting, quote unquote, head coach of point of contact. So it gave me some flexibility to kind of do some different things. So we had two weekly Zooms. And on those weekly Zooms, there will be videos um, to kind of spark conversations. We try to pro provide safe and supportive environments for these guys to talk about certain things. Um, one thing in particular that we did, we did an anonymous um, survey. Where we had guys talk about, um, you know, the importance of voting, whether or not they would vote, um, um, social injustice. Um, did you, you know, what do you know about you know, certain laws and certain things of that nature. And we asked the guys, hey, listen, this could be completely anonymous. All but three players, all but three players put their name on it. So when they told me that they, when they put their name on it, showed me that they wanted to be identified, I said, well, we can rip the Band-Aid off. Now we can talk about these issues. We, we can have guest speakers on Zoom. You know, these guys can have a voice. So what's important to you? So just... Um, by us having a voice, showing these kids that how to use their voice, and just just taking accountability for uh, for for the impact that we can have on our own society. So it's been it's been really really good watching these kids, like I said, step up and be accounted for. And I'm loving what I'm seeing in Texas right now. Early voting started yesterday. Uh, the lines are long. People saying that they're going to wait four and five, six hours, but at least to get the job done. Don't let the obstacle stop you. Don't be deterred by the suppression issues. I hear in Georgia, 11 hours to vote. Are you kidding me? That's a whole day of work for some people, right? You know, no. but to, but it's that important to make to get this change. This is going. This is generational right here for our kids and their kids. You know, to get this right now, right? You see what's going on with the with the Supreme Court right now. So I mean, it's. It's, so much is happening that they can see, for Coach Johnson, how important what you're saying to him is just by watching the news, what's going on around him as we speak. Yeah, absolutely. My mom used to say, man, if you, if you see a good fight, get in it. You know, it, it's, a, it's a reason, you know, and, and just to be liberated and be free and, and, and to, um, to be a part of, of history. And, to, and you, at, at, at some point, boss, we got, somebody going to ask us, you know, about, about this election. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to, you, you don't want the answer to be, I, I, I didn't vote. I didn't participate in it. You know, and that's what I told my kids, you know, Hey, you know, this is an opportunity for you. And the hardest thing in the world to do is to live with regrets. So, you know, so we voted today. Uh, I don't know where my sticker went, but we did not use our day, but you can kind of see you, this is all bent up. So we went through we, our guys. We gave them this. We went through all of this with them about wow. how to go about voting and who to. So they've had this all week to go through it, the candidates and things of that nature to be informed. Um, the university did, did not allow us to instruct them, you know, because they didn't want to, anyone to import biases upon it. But um, we voted today, and um, and it felt really, really good to do so. The reason why we didn't practice is because we wanted to vote today as a team. And then on on uh, on the election day, we we have a mandatory off day, boss. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out 
and, and work, not the polls per se, but we're going to work the streets and get people, um, let, let people know where the voting poll is and, and just direct them and continue to encourage them and celebrate them as they go in and come out of voting. I love that because you know what I'm doing here in Atlanta is I am going and giving out snacks and drinks to people waiting in line. You know while I'm not out, I'm not interviewing people. I'm out here giving snacks to people because I, I know what happens here in Georgia is that suppression's real here. <laughs> you know it's real here in Georgia, so I know you're gonna be there for a while. So I go out and give them snacks and drinks because I part of some of my sponsors to do that because they were so happy to do it. Now, coach, I'll be honest with you. And so I've been talking about life and the issues of, issues of the world. I've lost five sponsors, coach, four to five, five, five sponsors. You know, on the week. But guess what? I still got some with me who still were willing to do the right thing. So the five I lost, hey, it's all good. You know, it's right. good. I didn't need you anyway. I'm still I'm still going strong, right? But the, the idea that speaking about issues that pertain to me and my people from Chattanooga to Macon is a problem. A lot of time about, about the Hawks, the Braves, college basketball, it's okay. But when I talk about issues pertaining to me and my people, it's a problem. So just to say on the radio side, you know, it's funny. But I'm not going to be deterred to help my community. And as you do for your players, helping them be close to their community as well. Well, it's all commendable for you, Coach. I love it. Absolutely, man. Shout out to you, man. You, hey, you, 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 you come from that LeBron school. Look, don't, don't, don't tell me shut up and dribble. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, no, nah, man, much respect to you, man, because, um, hey, um, Sometimes, man, the, the, the court of public opinion, it, it, it's just that. That's all it is. It's just, it's just public opinion. And um, I, I encourage these guys, man, take the road, let's travel. It just seems harder. It yeah, just you, seems harder. That's it. Perception. <laughs> but it's more rewarding later, though. We take the road, oh, let's goodness. just travel. Because I feel yeah. rewarded. I feel like, you know, no matter what happens on November 3rd, I had an impact on it. I try. I may influence somebody to do something differently. So that's all that matters. My dad always tell me, as long as you get one, you may get, you get two, you get three, you get four. Let's make sure you reach at least one. So as long yeah. as you know you're doing that, you're making an impact. So that's what I feel like there. I'm doing, Coach. Yeah, start there, man. Shout out to you, man. That's big time. Now, Coach, talk to you about this, man. You know, for you guys getting in shape, and then they went there with you guys. So, how has that been reactivating them to, to, to what's going on here and getting them going ready for November 25th here, coming up here real soon in a month here? So, how has that been going so far, man? That's been pretty difficult, to be honest with you. You know, um, when guys have extended breaks, you know, we, we, we've we made this sport uh, more year round. You know, when, when I was growing up, you know, when it was baseball time, we played baseball. When it was football time, we played football. When it's basketball time, we played basketball. So we played everything when it was in season. Uh, now, you know, guys train and play basketball year round. So that extended break, you know, put out a lot of our guys in jeopardy of, uh, they say, soft tissue, soft muscle injuries. And then um, just also really trying to look at this year as you've done in the past. You know, saying, well, we were able to do this, this, and this at this point in time last year. But this is a different year. So just being flexible, being able to restructure some things have helped. Um, I can tell you right now, man, um, one thing that we've cut back on is, is really like uh, like running conditioning. We took out the mile. We took out our ladder run. We took out, I'm not going to say punishment run because we, we can't do that anymore, but we took out accountability running. So now we're focusing on, hey, these guys are probably get, getting as good a shape if you let them get up and down a little bit. So, yeah, we get up and down a little bit more. Um, and also, you know, hey, maybe they can make a few more shots if they have a stronger core. So now we do core exercises for accountability. So just finding, you know, boss, just finding creative ways to get it done. Hey, man, there, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but there are consequences. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to minimize the 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 the, um, the, the consequence. Most definitely. And uh, I can ask this coach, talk to us about this. Um, who are some guys on your roster that my guys need to look out for you here in Atlanta? Cause I know you all play Georgia State, Georgia Southern here. So who are some guys on the roster you need to look out for, key returners and key new, new, newcomers we should look out for on your roster this year, man? Yeah, man, we're blessed to have um, eight returning players. You know, so we have a good – core good nucleus of guys to kind of understand what, what we're doing and, and what our mission is and what our goals are. Uh, I would say definitely we got to start with our two guards. I think Mason Harrell and Marlon Davis 
or, or, or some of the some of the better guards in the conference. Um, you know, um, I, I know this conference is loaded with talented guards, but um, you know, Marlon Davis led the conference in, in assist to turnover ratio, and Mason Harrell was at least second or third. You know, so um, we like our guard duo, and um, you know, I think people can expect that those guys are going to play a little bit more together. You know. Um, because they've been feeding off each other pretty well. And, and at times throughout the course of the year last year, uh, we had our best lineup with those two on the floor. You know, um, we're going to throw the ball inside. So I think that, um, you know, paint touches are important, whether or not it's driven or, or pass. And hopefully we're, we're, we can get our guards to get downhill a little bit more. But if we throw it inside, we're throwing it inside to Alonzo Sule. You know, uh, Red Shirt Jr., you know, he came off the bench with great energy for us in the past. And, uh, you know, he's been in the lab work and he's been healthy. You know, he's confident. And he feels like with Eric Terry graduating, that this is his time. So I would say certainly those three guys, you know, coupled with, you know, the, the things that um, Isaiah Small can do, being a six six foot seven, um, four man with probably extended wingspan. You know, he's a slim, wiry guy, but he can be slippery at times. So um, we're looking for, for, for those guys to be key contributors. So, um, you know, if, if we're going to come to Atlanta and do something that's rarely done, you know, we need those guys to play well for us. Oh, Devin, now, Coach, now tell us about this. When y'all come to Atlanta, how's that trip for you guys coming to the ATL, play Georgia State, hit the Georgia State Sports Arena, which is a weird kind of setup, being on the third floor there. It's weird. It's weird. I see, not, not, it's like, not every school has it, you know, the way they have it, sports in Georgia State. So how is it to come play the Panthers? And how is it for you having some roots here in Atlanta, some friends and family here as well when you come to town, man? Well, for me, it's um, – I'm going to speak on a personal – it's always exciting. You know, because I know I'm going to get a chance to see my dad. My dad lives in Atlanta, you know, got a brother who lives there. So they're going to come to the game, you know, uh, got got high school friends that live there and um, just family from, from New Orleans that, that also live there. And they always come out and support. So I'm always excited. Um, from a competitor standpoint, from a coach and a player standpoint, um, man, I don't know if there's a game in which we know – what we're going to get or what we're getting ourselves into more than that one. I would say Lafayette is probably a close second, but when you walk in that gym right there, you better be ready to go or you're going to get embarrassed. Oh, and that's just, and they're going to let you know about it. The level of swag that those guys play with, the level of toughness, uh, and just a high level of skill. Uh we, although we are probably the furthest, uh, we're, we're, we're the furthest west of them, man, we keep an eye on what's going on in Georgia. Um, the championship for this conference goes through the state of Georgia. That's the Mo bottom line. Mo if definitely. you're going to win the championship in this conference, you got to beat the Georgia teams. Most definitely. And you got Brian Bird now at Southern, who you know from being Texas Tech, having to recruit, recruit against him for some guys. You know, he going to bring a new swagger down to where Coach Bonson went to James Madison now. And, you know, Rob Bernier, you know, he's going to do what he's going to do. Uh, now, I got to ask you, now, he's gone now. How was it always to play Ron Hunter's zones, man? People always tell me, man, his zones is, so, uh, is one of a kind. So tell us about how it was to play Ron Hunter's zones now when y'all come over here to play, when they come over to play you guys as well. It's something that you get better at the second time around, no doubt. Um, it's hard to prepare for it. You know, it's hard to rep it in practice and, and feel like you got it under control. Uh, if you look at it, the, t the time in which we have played well and beat Georgia State, it's the second time we've played them. Now we have a better feel, and now we have adjustments that, 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 that we think are going to put us in a position to be successful. Ron Hunter is a mastermind behind that zone. I mean, he ran it before he even got to Georgia State, and, he, and, he, and now he's running it at Tulane. Uh, he believes in it um, and, and, and gets his guys to believe in it. So, uh, but you know what? That wasn't just the, the, the toughest thing about playing Ron's team. Um, they were always very, very talented. And mm -hmm. what people don't know, they didn't play as fast as they appeared to play. They were very structured. <laughs> You know, he called things. They ran things. Most definitely. He knew where he wanted the ball at. Whether or not, hey, man, my, Ron did something that I said, man, this dude got three quality bigs, and he has Malik Ben Levy running a five. We can't hedge on this. We can't hedge this ball screen 
because he got a dude that's going to go seven for 11 from the three point line. If you continue to do that, you know, and, um, uh, he was just really, really good at creating mismatches that worked for him. He would post the Marcus Simons. Hey, yeah, he's my point guard, but I'm going to post him, you know. Hey, I'm going to make this thing even harder for you, you know. I'm going to play the Marcus Simons at the two and then bring in Kane Williams, not behind him, but with him. Now figure out that. How are you going to play that? So um, he's a great coach. Um, he, he does a great job of preparing this team. And um, listen. I'm glad he's gone, to be honest with you. But listen, look, let me tell you, tell you I, I, look, I got the utmost respect for Coach Lanier. That dude there is a dude. So uh, I'm not happy about that hire for obvious reasons. But listen, <laughs> like, Coach Lanier, I was on the phone with Coach Lanier today for 30 minutes, man. He's, a, he, he's like a big bro, so I, I really uh, – I'm happy for him. That's um, my guy, too. And, yeah, and I know he's going to do um, – exceedingly and abundant things there. So, Well, when you all play, I'll be so neutral. I'll play, I'm indifferent. <laughs> Man, look, one thing I know about you, boss, that is lip service right there. You're... I'm indifferent. I'm, 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 I'm serious. That's just because of the – Hey, that's just your mouth talking. I know where your heart at, man. <laughs> hey, hey, I went to Tennessee State, so I'm not going to say I'm Tennessee State, so I'm definitely indifferent. <laughs> I got you. Lose a Penny Collins play, hey, I'm good. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, shout out to Penny, man. He got that thing going, man. Penny, man, Penny got to be one of the first dudes that reached out to me when I got this, and um, certainly, man, just encouraged me to um, to operate in my truth, to trust myself. Um, and, uh, um, you know, he, he gave great advice, man. Penny, Penny, like the old uncle, man, like an old school uncle in the backyard, man. Like you like uncle Penny going to be there. You know, if uncle Penny going to be there, man, I'm coming. Cause I know it's going to be a good time. So man, shout out to Penny, man, Tennessee state, you know, wishing him, um, the best as, as practice got started. Yeah. My, I'm a model at Tennessee state university. Yeah, man. So coach Tilly, as long as they play in TC at TSU, man, I'm indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing somebody I don't know or don't like, I got you all day. <laughs> I'm a rock man, with the look, Bobcats, man. <laughs> man, look, I, look man, somebody asked me today, man. I mean, no, I'm lying. Two weeks ago when I first got the job, I said, man, we got to finish this schedule. I said, man, um, Southern wants to play. I say, Southern. Sean Woods. <laughs> I say, look, man. I say, man, Sean Woods is my guy. I said, first of all, we're not messing with him right now. And that's my that's my alma mater. So I said, I'm not in a place emotionally to play them right now. I said, I said, man, you gotta let me get my feet, you get my yes. my knees into this thing. We're not playing Southern right now. I fool around and, and at halftime, I be, you know, I be singing my alma mater. I said, look, I'm not ready for this, man. <laughs> Don't do this to me, man. You, you know? got that right. <laughs> man, you know, I'm not ready for this, man. You know, so uh well, no, man, shout out to Tennessee Tennessee State and all the HBCUs. You know, graduated from Southern, got my master's from PV, so it run, it run deep in my blood, man. So No doubt. Well, let's want to go for you, Coach, this, man. Talk to you about your Saints, man. Is Drew Brees coming back next year? Because, look, his arm is done, Coach. The arm man, like his you, noodle arm, and I'm just being real with you. Man, look, let me say something, man. Let me say something about Drew. <laughs> hey, um, that break didn't help him either. Okay, let's just say that. You know, when, you, when you're that old, you got to keep this thing going. That's why my man Tom Brady got got himself in trouble going to Tampa Bay um, practicing. He ain't had no business doing it, man. Mm-hmm. The old guys need that work. But, um, hey, man, when you're missing an elite level wide receiver like Michael Thomas, who's, you know, got a chance to be a Hall of Famer, you know, putting them Hall of Fame-like numbers this early on in his career, come from great pedigree with, with his uncle Keyshawn, you know what I'm saying? One of the best route runners, he, he fights to get open. Um, and just being that size. So certainly we, we're, we're missing that, and, and, and we're a little bit easier to, to key in on. But, you know, my man, my, my, man, my man Kamara, you know what I'm saying, a North Carolina oh, yeah. boy, that Georgia boy out there, hey, you know what I'm hey, saying? so sweet, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to be all right, you know. Uh, Mike, we'll, Mike, we'll get we'll, we'll get can't call Mike back, and um, you know Drew. Hey, I, I, I'm happy that we, that Drew's able to, you know, stand up after a play. Hey, you know, like we're, we you know we keeping him off the, off the ground. So uh, I think we're going to be all right now. I do think that um, 
that that we gotta we gotta tighten down some things. We're not as cohesive of a unit as, as we've been in the past. So if we can kind of clear up some some locker room issues, you know, and um, I think we can be all right. We just got a few little locker room issues we gotta clear up. Traquan Smith is developing too, though. I mean, look like you pay Emmanuel Sanders too much money because Trey Quan Smith is developing them to receive a job need, man. Because Emmanuel Sanders, I mean, he got name, baby. He ain't getting a job done like he could for you. Had a good Monday night, though. Had a good Monday night. Emmanuel is understanding that when you when, with Drew, you know, you got to fight to get open because he's going to try to fit that ball in some tight spots. So, but yeah, Trey Quan. But Tricorn a young a young buck, man. You know what I'm saying? He 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 just trying to make a name for himself. I like it though. So but when Mike comes back, he'll make it easier for those guys, you know, because you can't key in on them. And uh, you know, we're gonna try to put those guys in some situations where they can be successful if we can get Drew to stand up right. But uh one thing I one thing I hope we can do, man, we gotta open up some lanes for um for Camara to, to get to the second level. If he can get to the second level and get guys missing, you know, we get, I think he's getting hit too much at the line of scrimmage or before. So we can do that. We'll be all right. And let's take some heel, please. I mean, to stop that. No, I, like, he, he, like he takes away from Drew's rhythm. I mean, I'm like, okay, now Drew takes take, take, take some heel. Third, third down, bring his heel, third down. Like, come on. Yes. Sean, I know Sean Payton's a mad scientist, but come on, man. Let's take some heel. More Drew Brees. Enjoy his last year before you go to James Winston, the pick six master. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> certainly, certainly, certainly um, by overthinking it with Taysom. You know, um, I mean, everybody knows if he's in a game, he's getting the ball. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's not that hard. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I mean, he's going to drop back, but he's going to run it. So we got to figure out a way how to be, be a little bit more creative with him and, uh, and and just use him in situations where it's not so obvious. Oh, definitely. Coach Johnson, man, good to speak with you about your program, my brother. Talk some Saints with you. Uh, There's always my favorite team to come to town, the Saints and the Cowboys, between you and them. I like y'all fans better. It's, it's more better with, with, with talk <laughs> junk with y'all. The Cowboy fans just just arrogant for no reason. They ain't won nothing in 20, over 25 years, so they need to be quiet. <laughs> y'all won some, won some is against the great Peyton Manning, so, hey, I can respect that. But the Cowboy fans, man, y'all chopping and cho- every year. It's our year. It's been there for 25 years. Shut up. <laughs> you know it's a Cowboys year every year. That's how they operate, man. But certainly, man, it's always good uh, visiting with you, with you guys, man. Uh, love the, you know, just just love the platform that you have and how you're using it. Uh, and I love the passion that you do this with, man. Like, I, I just think that you, like, this This is not a chore for you, man. This is all your pleasure. And I just think that it, it, we we as people, we got to do more things. We got we to gotta go in the fields in which it don't feel like work, where it's never, where it's never been a job. It's been your pleasure. So um, just, just, just seeing you operating your truth, man, I just wish you all the best, man, moving forward, man. Same here, Coach. I even know you from New Orleans, man. I, I got your back, man. <laughs> I got you. I appreciate it, man. Look, if you in that city, I, I'm going to take care of you, man. Shoot me a text. I got you. List of places to go. List the foods to eat. You know, whatever, whatever whatever, is your palate, let me know, man. I'm good down there. Trust me. I'm going to text you off the air. Get, get, get with you, nigga. I got to know when I go play the Pelicans, what I need to go eat. What I need to go do while I'm down there. <laughs> I got you, man. I'm telling you, I got you. Trust and believe. No doubt. Well, today, Johnson, the Boston Man Show, Texas State Bobcats out of Sun Belt Conference. Check him out, people.